I want to talk to you about the greatest prayer warrior on earth, and he prays for you daily. One of the most amazing revelations I've ever received from the scripture is the fact that the Holy Spirit prays for you consistently. And I want to show you how this impacts your life. Romans chapter 8, I'm going to read verse 26 and 27. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. The Holy Spirit is the greatest prayer warrior of all time. And the Holy Spirit prays for you. Now notice the scripture says here, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. The grace of God is the glue that holds together all of the broken pieces of our lives. God's power sustains us. And as we surrender those weaknesses to the Holy Spirit, those weaknesses in surrender become strength. When we rely upon the person of the Holy Spirit, our walk with Christ is simple. When we try to do it through religion or man-made efforts and protocols, we begin to become spiritually exhausted, weighed down, confused, even sometimes cynical because things aren't working exactly the way we want them to work. But when you rely upon the strength of the Holy Spirit, you're like an eagle soaring on the winds. You surrender to the flow of the Holy Spirit in your life, and He takes you where He wants you to go. In our weakness, we don't know what to pray. In our weakness, we lack desire for the Word of God. In our weakness, we tend toward disorder. We're pulled toward sin. The pool of the world becomes strong without the power of the Holy Spirit. In our weakness, we don't know how to worship. In our weakness, we don't have the boldness for evangelism. In our weakness, we habitually sin. In our weakness, we lack peace, we lack faith, we lack clarity, we lack joy. But the Holy Spirit, thank God, helps us in our weakness. What does that mean? It means that He supplements those broken areas of our lives with His strength. He gives us that fire. He gives us that passion. He gives us that spiritual life and vitality that causes us to become people of prayer, people of the Word. Think about the fact that sometimes you go about your day possibly neglecting the things of God and then suddenly this strong desire seemingly out of nowhere is produced within you to pray, to read the word. Maybe a strong conviction comes over you about the things that you're doing or the things that you're thinking or saying and that pool comes from the Holy Spirit. He faithfully helps us in our weakness and many times we do find ourselves in weak places. We have the tendency to wander. We have the tendency to become weak in the Spirit. We have the tendency to neglect spiritual duties and practices and responsibilities, and that's when the Holy Spirit begins to help us. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Thank God He does it. Then the Bible says, for example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. So how many times have you gone before the Lord, committed to pray, and you say within yourself, I'm going to pray for an hour, or you say, I'm going to pray uh, for my city or for my loved ones. I'm going to pray for the ministry. I'm going to really seek the face of God. You pray for what seems like 30 minutes. You look at the clock and maybe two minutes have gone by, and then you wonder within yourself, what on earth am I going to pray? What do I say when I pray? Am I supposed to walk around? Am I supposed to sit? Is it okay if I lie down? Am I supposed to speak it out loud? Can I say it just within my thoughts? How do I pray? What do I pray? What am I supposed to say? Maybe you've heard those stories from people who talk about how they spend hours with the Lord and you say within yourself, I want that, but I don't know what to pray. I wouldn't know what to say for three hours. Maybe you're saying that within yourself. Well, this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. Now watch this. This is powerful. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. What a powerful revelation that the Holy Spirit himself wants to pray for you. 
Think about how a grandparent prays for a grandchild. Think about how a mother or a father prays for their children. Think about the passion and the love and the fervor and the strength and the might behind those prayers. The sincerity behind those prayers. The love behind those prayers. Well, the Holy Spirit prays for you with more love than a parent praying for their child. The Holy Spirit prays for you with more passion, with more sincerity than a parent who prays for their child. He loves you with an immensely strong love. The scripture declares, I've loved you with an everlasting love. No love like it. You've heard that the Father loves you. You've heard that Jesus loves you. But consider the fact also that the Holy Spirit loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you and he prays for you. Now the scripture here tells us that he helps us in our weakness, meaning he's aware of our weaknesses. He's not surprised by our weaknesses. He's not surprised by our mistakes. He's not surprised when we wander astray like sheep. But the Holy Spirit patiently, faithfully, guides you back to the things of God, brings you back to Him. And the scripture says very clearly here that He prays for you with groanings. What does that mean, groanings? This is, this is to pray with might, with force, with intense desire that cannot be expressed in words. I dare say that if you could see visibly, physically, the Holy Spirit praying for you, you would see him face down on the floor, tears streaming down his face. I would even go far as saying as his fist would be pounding on the floor as he prays for you, his voice would shake the room because he prays with you. He prays for you with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And he prays for us despite our weakness. Think about the fact that the Holy Spirit knows you better than anyone else knows you. And the one who knows you better than anyone else knows you prays for you like no one else can pray for you. What a powerful truth to know that we have such a friend. When you feel like giving up, when you feel like you don't know what to pray, when you wonder if anybody cares, when you wonder if anybody prays for you or thinks about you, the Holy Spirit does. And he prays for you with such might, such power. He prays for you with such love. And here's what happens. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. As you look throughout the scripture in the Old and the New Testament, you're going to see a common truth threaded throughout all of the scripture. You're going to see that God embraces the humble. What does it mean to be humble? People who are humble acknowledge their need of God. They acknowledge that they're helpless without Him. And they constantly plead with God, saying things like, God, don't let me wander. God, give me a love for your word. God, give me a desire to fulfill your will. It's to pray according to God's will. The Holy Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. What does this mean? It means that the Holy Spirit pulls us toward the purpose of God. It means that the Holy Spirit inclines our hearts to his word. In those times of life where we feel like we're drifting, in those times of life where we feel like we don't have the spiritual strength to continue, where we feel like we're failing in all of our responsibilities, the Holy Spirit comes alongside of us, prays for us like no one else can pray for us, and he pulls us back on track. He takes us back to the place of harmony with God's will. While we have the tendency to wander, the Holy Spirit keeps up with us by doing spiritual maintenance. You see, so many times 
we look at our spirituality and we imagine that we have a list to fulfill. If you're like me, you're overwhelmed sometimes when you read the scripture and you realize that there are countless ways that you're not like Jesus. I don't know how many times I've read the word and just said, Lord, there's so many ways I'm not like you. Help me to become more like you. I want to be more like Jesus in every single way. And if you're not careful, you begin to become overwhelmed because you create this list and you say, okay, I need to change my character there. Maybe I can manage my anger there. Maybe I can become more patient here. I got to deal with that sin over there. I got to change my mindset over here and I have to change the way I interact with these people over there. And then add to that, I have to pray this often, read this much of the scripture. I have to go to church. I have to attend those meetings. I have to be a part of volunteering in my community. And all of these things begin to stack up and we feel overwhelmed because we imagine that we have this long list to fulfill. And yes, we have those responsibilities. Let me make that very clear. We have those responsibilities as believers. But here's the wonderful truth. God is not looking for you to go down that whole list. He's looking for you to do one thing. And in doing this one thing, you will fulfill that list. Don't be overwhelmed. Take that list of all those things that trouble you about yourself and give them to God, and then do one thing, surrender to the Holy Spirit. And what does he do? He pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. I tell him all the time, Holy Spirit, I'm your responsibility because I'm surrendered to you. Holy Spirit, I'm your project because I'm surrendered to you. Don't let me go astray. Don't let me lose that love for your word. Give me a passion to do your will. Give me a desire to live like you want me to live. That is produced by the Holy Ghost who prays for you with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for that one receiving this prayer now. And Lord, I ask that you would begin to strengthen them by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. I want you to say that out loud. Even write it in the comments. Just say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We honor you. We love you. Thank you for helping us. Help us now to surrender to your work in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Well, if you were blessed by that message, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to Encounter TV. Click that notification bell when you do. Also, you can help our ministry continue to do its work all around the world by becoming a monthly ministry supporter for $10, $30, or $100 a month. Just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner for information on becoming a partner with our ministry. If this video blessed you, you might also like Holy Spirit protector of the call, where I talk about how the Holy Spirit keeps you in the will of God that you might fulfill the call of God on your life. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God.